Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Now the whiteboard behind me looks quite busy and that's because there's many different classes of antibiotics and we're gonna go through some of those classes. We're gonna go through some examples. We're gonna go through how they work and what type of bacteria they kill off. So let's have a look. Now, when we go through these, I've created my own mnemonic that helps me remember them. The mnemonic is, antibiotics can protect the queen's men, servants, and guards. It's pretty dumb, but it helps me. Take the first letter of each one, and that's the first letter of an antibiotic class. So if we start at the beginning, antibiotics, the A is gonna stand for aminoglycosides. Now this class of antibiotics will kill off gram-negative bacteria specifically, Watch the video where I outline the differences between gram-positive and gram-negative. One of the major differences is gram-positive bacteria have a very big cell wall surrounding it. Gram-negative bacteria have a very small cell wall or thin cell wall, and they have two membranes as well. That's gram-negative, so two phospholipid bilayers. Now, the aminoglycosides kill off gram-negative specifically. Two main types or examples of aminoglycosides are the streptomycins and gentamicins, and the way they kill off bacteria is by inhibiting the protein synthesis. So DNA needs to be turned to proteins, and proteins do all the function within a cell, okay? Now in order to turn DNA to proteins, you need something called ribosomes. And every ribosome has two subunits to them. For bacteria, they have a 50S subunit and a 30S subunit, and the DNA sort of weaves its way in the middle of these two subunits, and it spits out amino acids that fold into proteins. Now, human cells don't have the 50S and 30S subunits. We've got a 60S and a 40S subunit, so we exploit these differences to kill bacteria off. In this case, the gentamicins, streptomycins, stop the 30S subunit from turning DNA into proteins. Now, as we go to the next one, we go to CAN. The C stands for cephalosporins. They will kill off both gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. Examples are cefazolin and cefadroxyl. And again, they kill bacteria by inhibiting cell wall synthesis. So I shouldn't say again, we said protein synthesis for the first one. Cell wall synthesis in this case. Remember, bacteria cells are surrounded by a cell wall. Human cells are not. The cell wall is made up of sugars stacked on top of each other and each sugar is connected by these protein or peptide links, and the peptides need to be interlinked to one another. And so what these particular types of antibiotics do is they break the bond between the proteins that hold the sugar molecules together, and that way the cell wall just comes apart. Now this is important because bacteria are hyperosmotic. That means they've got a lot of stuff dissolved on the inside of the cell, which means water wants to rush in. When water rush in, rushes in, it wants to burst the cell, and the cell wall stops that from happening. So if you destroy the cell wall, you destroy the bacteria. Now for the next one, P for protect, that's the penicillins. You've all heard of penicillins before. Penicillins are at least the first class of penicillins, such as penicillin G, only were effective against gram-positive bacteria, and that's because it attacked the cell wall again. Now, it inhibits Again, that cell wall from being synthesized by, again, breaking those bonds. But because it didn't kill off gram-negative, we needed a more broad-spectrum antibiotic, so we started to create ampicillin. Now, the thing is this. Penicillin G is a very big antibiotic, and when you compare gram-positive to gram-negative bacteria, gram-negative bacteria have two phospholipid bilayers around it, okay? Two membranes, one on the inside, one on the outside, but it's got these pores, these little channels to allow things to go past these membranes. Now, penicillin G was too big to get through these pores, so it only killed off the gram-positive bacteria. So what we did was we created ampicillin. Ampicillin is a smaller version of penicillin G, and it was able to jump into these pores and kill off gram-negative bacteria as well, okay? So the penicillins can kill off gram-positive and gram-negative, depending on the type of penicillin. Now, the other thing is that Bacterial cells are really smart and they're very good at becoming antibiotic resistant, especially to the penicillins. Now the way penicillins work is, I told you, you've got the sugar molecules of the cell wall stacked on top of each other, you've got proteins holding them together, and then you've got bonds between the proteins. They break the bonds between the proteins. The way they do this is by the penicillin molecule looks like this, okay? This square part is what binds up those interlinking portions for the proteins, stops them from coming together. Bacteria, and that's called a beta-lactam. That's called the beta-lactam ring, okay? Now, bacteria have evolved an enzyme now called beta-lactamase that destroys that ring, so stopping penicillins from working, 
Okay? Now we've also got this part called penis, that's the penicillin aspect, but bacteria have created penicillin A's as well to destroy that too. So what we've done is we've created a new class of penicillin, which is called methicillin. And methicillin can kill pretty much anything. However, it's now found out that we've got bacteria that have become resistant to methicillin, which is one of the last line of antibiotic defenses. And they're called methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA. All right, let's move on. T, tetracyclines kill off gram positive and gram negative bacteria. You've got the tetracycline and doxycycline. They do this by inhibiting protein synthesis of the 30S subunit, just like we spoke about up here. Then Q, we've got the quinolones and fluoroquinolones. They kill off gram positive and gram negative as well. Ciproflaxin is an example of this type of bacteria, uh, uh, antibiotic, sorry. And in this case, we haven't spoken about this yet, it inhibits DNA from replicating. So in order for a bacteria to stay alive, the DNA needs to replicate and create more copies of itself, okay? But bacterial DNA is wrapped around itself. It's this double-stranded circular DNA that's wrapped around itself and in order to make copies of it, it needs to unwind. And so we need an enzyme that does this unwinding called topoisomerase. There's different types, two and four for example, and these antibiotics stop the topoisomerases from unwinding the DNA therefore stops it from being able to make more copies, therefore stops more bacteria from being made. Then we've got M for macrolides, they're gram positive specific. Erythromycin is an example, may have heard of that one before, and it inhibits protein synthesis. Not the 30S subunit this time, but the 50S subunit, so DNA can't be made into proteins. S for sulfonamides, gram positive and gram negative, and this is sulfur methoxazole. This is an example and inhibits folate synthesis. Okay, so bacteria can make its own folate for metabolism, growth, development. We cannot, we need to get folate from our diet. So we can exploit this difference by inhibiting the enzyme that allows, us to, allows bacteria to make folate. It's not gonna inhibit us because we don't have that enzyme. So inhibiting this enzyme will kill off the bacteria, and this is the sulfonamides. Then the last one is the glycopeptides. This is gram positive specific, and vancomycin is an example of this and inhibits cell wall synthesis as well. So this is an example of some of the major classes of antibiotics.